Okay, hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Archihacks. And today I'm gonna be sharing one of my favorite tips of all time, and that is using Rhino layout. And the reason why this is my favorite is because it allows me to shorten my iteration time dramatically. Knowing this tip will probably speed up your workflow by multiple folds, especially when you're at a work placement or at a very early stage design exploration. So hope you guys are excited for this and let's go down how I created this entire project from scratch all the way into a presentation ready drawing. So here I am in Rhino. This is where I started with basically blank canvas and I'm quickly going to lay out the room. So the bottom left corner is going to be like a living space with kitchen and on the top right corner, I will draw another box that represents the bedroom space. And I'm going to be speeding through this process right now. But if you guys are also interested in kind of walking through the entire process step by step, let me know in the comments. And if there are enough comments in the, yeah, in this video, I will go ahead and upload the slow down version so that you can follow step by step. Now, basically I'm going out and blocking out all the spaces and right away, immediately I realized this is actually a really good time to bring in some cat blocks. And the reason I want to bring them in early on is so that I can block out the space more efficiently and have a better sense of scale. So as you can see, the moment I brought in the bed, I realized the room is actually quite large. So this, so this is going to be a quite a luxurious unit. And this is why I'm like starting to resize the room. So if you didn't do this from the beginning, it might have been quite disastrous. You lay out the room, put in other wall details, and you realize the room looks oversized. So that's not the kind of situation you want to be in. So I recommend you adding in some cat blocks early on. And this pack that I'm using is available on Archive. I'll be leaving the link in the description. So make sure to check that out. It's a really good way to support the channel as well. And this cat block is really great because not only does it contain bedroom related stuff, but there's also bathroom, kitchen, dining area, as well as living room um, cat blocks as well. So as you can see, all of these cat blocks are coming from a single set. They're already blocked in, put into the correct layer so that they are just ready to be dropped into your project. It's basically one cat block to sort of rule them all. Now, of course, there is some manual work that needs to be done. For example, this cabinetry and millwork that is different project by project. So you can do that. Uh, you might have to do that on your own at the end of the day, but still, this will save you so much time and this is just a one-time investment and I think it's totally worth it. Now this part is where I'm just like creating some more details for the bedroom space. There's a coat hanger and all that. And I'm also making sure that all the curves that comprise the walls are closed curves so that I can later add some poche really quickly. I'm also starting to realize that we could use some vegetations in this drawing. So I'm pulling in some more vegetation blocks as well. Now this block, these blocks are also really useful because you can scale them down and use them as interior planting as well. But in this case, we'll just use them as full size outdoor vegetation. As you can see, using the blocks only allow you to size your rooms more correctly. And this seems more comfortable as well. I quickly adjust the blocks so that they are in the correct layer. And the reason I do this is so that we can color them correctly when we are printing them in the using the Rhino layout. Now we're almost at the point where we are able to take advantage of Rhino layout. Now to do that, I'm going to go down to the plus button over here and choose new layout and choose a printer of your choice. Now for this, I'm going to be using a letter size paper and I'll double click into the layout to adjust the view. So I kind of want this to be in the middle like that. And then I'll double click to disable that view. And now I'll click the frame to make sure we're in the correct scale. I think we roughly want this to be in one to 100 scale. So I'll do, I'll do that. And once the view is in the desired location, what you can do is click on the locked button so that the view doesn't move accidentally. Once that is ready, now we can start calibrating the lines to make it to our purpose. So for example, Right now, all the lines are showing up as white. And that is because our layers are set to um, print color is set to the same as the layer color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the layers and set the print color to black. Now you may notice that nothing has changed here. 
And that is because our display mode is not set to print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, is I'm going to type in the print display command and set the state to turned on. Now, as you can see, you can see the correct line, uh, line color for each of these. And I've actually went ahead and added some kind of line weight to the zero layer. But in case you haven't, what you can do is click on the print width and choose a thickness of line you actually want. So actually, I'll actually increase to 0 0.35 just for the demonstration purpose. As you can see, the, all the lines that are placed on the layer zero turns out a lot thicker than all the other lines. So this is what we want. Now, as you can see, we're seeing some mistakes. So I'm going to be double clicking into the layout and fixing some of the layer placements. So I'm going to be using the command called match layer so that we can place the layers or lines in a correct location. So for this, I'm going to be putting them on house object like so and double click out of them. Okay, there we go. And line weights have been fixed. Now from here, one thing I might want to do is I want to add some poche and hatching to the drawing. So I'm going to double click into the drawings again and choose all the closed curves that represent the walls. And here I'm going to create a new layer called hatching. And we'll create the hatch here. So we'll type in the hatch and create a, let's use a solid color for now. And let's give it a light gray color. So you do that, you can see that the change is applied correctly here. Now for this, apparently this curve is open right now. So I'm going to type in the command called close curve. Looks like there was an opening here. I have to get a little involved here. So I'm going to explode the curve to see what's happening. So it seems like there was an overlapping line over here. So I think it should be fine now. I'll join everything and use close curve command again. Okay, it's been closed correctly, and we should be able to use hatch. Perfect. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes the black might show up still too strong, and you might want to get thinner line weight. At this point, what I would do is I would actually change the color of the line. So for example, we might want to adjust the A detail layer. This is the dotted line here. And we can change this to like slightly brighter color and it'll show up a lot lighter on the print. I think I might want to make the glass show up a little stronger. So I'm going to go over to glass line and choose 0.18. Of course, if we want to do this correctly, we should probably turn this into like a double line to show the thickness and all, but it is what it is. And last but not the least, I want to take the plants layer and give it a green color. Find nice and vibrant green. Okay, cool. Yeah, now because the layout background is gray, you may not be able to see all the lines correctly. What you really have to do is just print it and see the preview. Now, before we print it, I want to show you another cool trick. I'm going to add another viewport and zoom into the area that I want to focus on. So for example, I want the second layout to focus on the bedroom at a different scale. So let's say this is 1 to 2, 5, or actually 1 to 50. And then create another one that focuses on the living room. One to 50 scale as well. Now, if you make any change within the actual model space, all the changes will be applied across the entire project. So for example, I'm going to move this furniture piece over here and I'll add this piece as a nightstand next to the bed over here. As you can see, this change has been applied across all of the layouts. Now, all you have to do is control P to print each of these layouts and go down to output and scale, choose multiple layouts. So if you do 1-3, this indicates that you want to print page 1 to 3, and it'll include all the illustrations that we've just created. Now things are looking a little flat, so I'm going to go ahead and create one more hatching, which is going to be on the floor. So I'm going to choose basically everything in the room like that, and then I'll say hatch. And now hatch command will try their best to figure out where to put the hatching. Sometimes they'll get it wrong. So at this point, you might want to 
click boundary and actually highlight exactly where you want the hatching to be. So I'm going to go ahead and choose grid layout over here and then hit OK. And I'm going to repeat the same process over here as well. I'm going to create a thin line over here just to separate the bathroom space. And I'm going to make sure to exclude the door so that the hatching doesn't get stopped at the door swing. I'll try hatch again and hit the middle space over here and say OK. Cool. That's looking pretty good. Now, one tricky thing is that once you go back to the print space, the scale of the hatching might be a little bit different. Now, in that case, what you want to do is just click on the hatching um, in the model space like this and then change the scale over here. So if we change this to 10, this should be roughly correct. One thing I forgot to mention is that in case you want to create this dotted line effect, all you have to do is click on the line type column over here and then choose the line type that you want. You can also customize these by going into the options and specifying a pattern um, language. And I've also actually given all the layers some kind of weight except for the hatch and plant. Actually, for the plant, I'm going to give it a bit of a, a print width as well. And now I'll print it again. Okay, so once everything is ready, I'm going to hit Control P and make sure that we're printing all three pages. And instead of sending this job to printer, I'm going to just create a PDF file. Okay, and there we go. We have a beautiful looking plant right over here. And as you can see, all the line weights are showing up correctly. And things are well separated. Things are weighted correctly, hatched correctly. And it's really, it's pretty much ready to go to be presented. So, hope you guys found this useful. And let me know if you guys end up using this. And my fingers are dying now, so I'm going to go rest up now. Hope you guys have a great end of the year. And uh, I'll see you guys next year. Bye.